Just recently, Hollywood decided to treat us with a PG-13 Tomb Raider movie. That's right, a PG-13 movie adaptation of a game that was well known for its adult rating and mature tones is now watering itself down to appeal to kids. How can this possibly go right? But as many of you know, this isn't Hollywood's first attempt at bringing Laura Croft to the big screen. That reputation goes to 2001's Laura Croft Tomb Raider, and it's time to find out which of these two adaptations is superior. Let the battle commence. The story for the original Tomb Raider is that there are two pieces of an ancient triangle that exist and Laura, through ridiculously sudden circumstances, finds that she has a device that can uncover them from inside a clock which suddenly starts ticking. Instead of burying it on a desert island where no one can find it, Laura intends to mount a solo expedition to find the triangle pieces, as when combined together they will enable you to travel back in time. But you can only do it when there is some specific alignments and... stuff. And an evil group called the Illuminati... <laughs> steal the key that Laura has and decide to take this power for themselves so they can do... stuff. Yeah, this story makes no sense. In fact, I would actually call it one of the dumbest stories I've ever heard in my life. With that said, the movie clearly doesn't want to focus on story, it just wants to be a dumb, fun action movie, and I can roll with that. But this is the story segment of a versus video, and that excuse doesn't fly here. So the film's only hope is if the story for the new Tomb Raider is somehow worse. So, the movie opens with our new Laura Croft, who spends her time boxing and stealing fruit. One day, she finally decides to sign her father's inheritance, until she discovers his office full of research which includes information on the final expedition he went on before he went missing. And this comes complete with a video message, instructing her to destroy his research. She somehow takes this as, don't destroy my research, and go on an adventure instead. When in actuality, an adventure to the fireplace would have fixed everything and prevented the next hour and 30 minutes from happening. But we'll just ignore that. For now. So she mounts an expedition to the mysterious island to continue her father's work, which he told her explicitly to destroy. And yes, this does come back to bite her on the arse. As she makes her journey, the aggressive waters cause the ship she's travelling on to crash. Almost immediately when she arrives, she discovers an evil militant organisation called Trinity, which is run by the guy who got a spine ripped out in Predators, and they specialise in unravelling artefacts and using it for their own detestable agendas. And it's up to Laura Croft to stop Trinity from stealing these ancient artefacts and essentially destroying the world. Yeah, that escalated quickly, didn't it? From crashing onto an island to preventing world domination. Now what really bothers me about this storyline, other than the obvious, is that the game it's based on already had a perfect story that they could have pulled from, but Hollywood decided to throw it away because they'd prefer to have this movie compared to a superhero film rather than the acclaimed survival story it's based on. So they deserve more than just losing this round to a movie from 17 years ago, but I'm too polite to say what that is. I honestly don't think either of these movies deserve to win with regards to story, but seeing as this is a versus video between the two movies and not the games, the new Tomb Raider got lucky and does have the superior story. Now it's important to note that both movies represent Laura Croft at two completely different stages of her life. In the 2001 movie, she is fully realised, and in the remake, she is just starting out. And this is due to the fact that the new Tomb Raider is essentially an origin story. So how did the new movie do with the character? Well, first of all, they certainly got the look down. The actress, Alicia Vikander, definitely has the physical appearance of Laura Croft, although they did try to give her more muscles, which I think is a logical inclusion, as it makes her unusually strong grip when platforming more plausible. She also makes all the grunt noises that she made in the game without making them sound laughable, which is a commendable achievement if you ask me. And speaking of the game, she even incorporates a lot of similar techniques. Other than that, there is not much else I can compliment her on. One of the many problems with the execution of her character is that the movie seems to be convinced that it's giving this deep and motivational arc of a woman who is already skilled, but through circumstantial situations is becoming even more empowered. And I honestly thought the movie did a piss poor job at convincingly illustrating this. As I alluded to in the story segment, this movie is supposed to tell the origin story as to how Laura Croft came from being completely normal like you and me, to becoming the fully realised character we know her as. In the movie, however, she is not vulnerable enough. She experiences a couple of horrific events, and the aftermath don't have a strong or long-lasting impact on her as they should, and in general, it feels like this movie doesn't want her to be too emotional, as that will make this strong female character come off as too vulnerable. And this is a direct result of today's misguided social commentary of how we should receive strong female characters, and it is tainting the execution in the majority of Hollywood films. 
There are only two scenes where she lets loose and shows a decent range of emotions, but other than that, she is too emotionally subdued throughout the rest of the movie. Whenever something bad happens, like she'll get hurt or she'll kill someone, she will act slightly agitated in the spur of the moment, but then a few seconds later she will forget all about it and go on with the rest of her day as if nothing happened. Now I hold the rebooted Tomb Raider game right up there with Aliens and Terminator with regards to how you make a strong female character, and this movie just forces it so artificially even though the game incorporates it naturally. Despite having the perfect blueprint on how to make a great female character, the movie went, well, for a lack of a better word, the dumb action movie route. Which is fine for some occasions, but not this interpretation of Laura Croft. Now you might have noticed that all this time I've been talking about Laura emotionally. Well now I'm going to talk about her mentally, and mentally, she is really stupid. Now her father is presumed dead, and as far as her livelihood goes, she is hardly getting by. She even steals an apple for crying out loud, that's how bad her financial situation is. But what you don't find out until later on is that she actually does have a ton of money saved up, and it's called her father's inheritance money, and believe it or not, but despite constantly being told to take it, she just doesn't. And the reason is because she doesn't want to admit to herself that her father's dead, which is fine, but the thing is, she's low on money, is in debt, and has to steal a freaking apple in order to eat. So if she doesn't want to admit her father's dead, then that's fine, she doesn't have to. But he would still want her to inherit everything when he's gone. Dead or alive, if he's not there to take care of her anymore but has money that can, then he would damn well want her to take it. But she just doesn't do it. Her solid argument for this is, I'm not that kind of croft. Whatever the hell that means. To make things worse, if she doesn't take the inheritance, then her father's business will be sold and so will his house. And that's enough to make her begrudgingly pick up the pen, but she still refuses to sign the dotted line. Instead, she decides to travel to the aforementioned island and is looking to sell her father's priceless possessions in a pawn shop to get some travel money. Even though her father is already rich and if she had just signed the dotted line an hour ago and taken the bloody inheritance money, she would have saved her father's house, his business, she wouldn't have to sell her father's possessions and she'd be able to safely travel in a helicopter instead of the dangerously renowned sea, and heck, she'd even be able to take a crew of people with her on this idiotic exhibition. But nope, she doesn't do any of that. Seriously, they try to show that she's a strong woman, but she's so unbelievably dumb. And I can't get behind a character that is this stupid. And simultaneously, this acts as a disservice to the game, which wrote her as an intelligent character. <sighs> as for Angelina Jolie's version of the character, well, unlike the new movie, this Laura Croft is in her prime and has already participated in a ton of training and has a full history of missions under her belt. This was made back at the time when a movie could incorporate a strong female character without shoving an unwarranted feminist social message in your face every five minutes. Strangely enough though, this Laura sure does know what to do 99% of the time. Maybe I missed it, but they don't seem to tell you how she is so efficient at solving these puzzles. I mean, I know that's a specialty in the game, but at the very least you would expect some sort of problem solving or trial and error. Instead, the bad guys do most of it, and she just shows up to complete the final step. Also, as you would expect, she is much more skilled with regards to combat, but we'll talk more about that in the action segment. And with regards to her appearance, this movie also accurately represents this version of the character. Her clothing, the way she runs, the way she stands, her clothing, the way she flips, the clothing, the way she shoots both her guns, her clothing, the hairlines, and did I mention the clothing? I just thought I'd make sure, because in the very opening scene, the movie continuously tries to remind you. Now I know this is what made the video game character so popular back in the day, ironically more so than the gameplay, but I don't care. This is way too much. In every scene, her chest is always sticking out and it's just gratuitous. Now for those of you that still aren't with me, and I know some of you aren't, let me put it this way. Imagine if this movie was directed or produced by Michael Bay. Would people be as accepting of this overly exaggerated tight clothing and cleavage? Or would he be held to account for taking it to ridiculous lengths? Seriously, it's practically a cliche to keep pointing the finger at Michael Bay when he does this, but the truth of the matter is, many other movies have been doing it too, way before Michael Bay came onto the scene. And honestly, this movie makes the sexualized nature of Michael Bay's films look modest in comparison. Anyway, moving on. Now something Angelina Jolie's Laura Croft has over the new one is her emotions. When she has scenes of reflection of her long lost father, she shows signs of emotional vulnerability, which is exactly what you would expect someone to do. 
But as I said, the remake doesn't want her to look too vulnerable like a normal human being as this negatively coincides with female empowerment. So they take 90% of it away and just leave a couple of very short scenes behind to make it look like she's emotionally complex, but really she isn't. For example, there's a scene where she finds her father's camcorder that has been laying around for well over a decade and somehow still has battery life in it, and when she watches the personal message her father recorded for her, she is absolutely stiff and completely emotionless. I mean, if the main character doesn't show she cares when seeing a personal video message of her dead father, then why the hell should we? Iron Man 2 managed to accomplish this pretty well when Tony gets a surprise video message from his father, and despite the movie being pretty stupid, I still remember this scene, and that's because it came across as a very convenient but genuine moment. Heck, even Batman cried when he got a written message from his father, but in 2018, no, we can't have a female cry and show any signs of human emotion, because that will make her look too weak and we need to push female empowerment. Oh, shut the hell up. When done right, watching our protagonist emotionally break down actually benefits the character as it showcases their humanity and gives them more depth, and if anything, it makes us feel more emotionally invested in them. Even the 2001 movie knew this. So both interpretations of Laura Croft have their flaws, but ultimately, the one that is superior without a shadow of a doubt is the 2001 movie. Angelina Jolie's Laura may be overly smart, but Alicia Vikander's version is overly stupid, and there were several times throughout the movie where her stupidity, not courage, but stupidity, got on my nerves. Additionally, when Jolie's version showcases confidence, you believe it, but when Alicia Vikander tries to show it, specifically in her moment of heroism, it's not earned and just comes across as completely fake. The 2001 Tomb Raider is directed by Simon West, and he has proved that he can stage great action in movies such as Con Air, which I really enjoyed. But he also proved that he can do it horribly wrong when he made The Expendables 2, which I consider to be the worst of the trilogy. So how does he do with Tomb Raider? Well, it was good. For the time. But when you get down to it, the only action scene that I enjoyed was the opening scene, which pays some nice homages to the original games. Other than that, the rest of the action was dull and boring to me. Even this scene, which I remember liking at the time, is now just so underwhelming. And this is especially surprising when you take into account that action movies in both the 80s and 90s still hold up incredibly well. But not here. It's just so over-stylized to the point that it doesn't come off as dumb fun, it just comes off as dumb. And the amount of bullets that miss her is more unrealistic than what you'd get in an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Also, the bigger threats she deals with get axed off really quickly. And when she's fighting off the CGI statues, this type of action was really cool back in the early 2000s, but it was destined to age really badly. I mean, you can now literally take a video game from 10 years ago and it would look much more visually interesting and real than this. There's also this lame-ass scene where Laura and the villain of the movie run up to the pyramid to grab this triangle. As well as making little to no sense, it is so simple and lacks any sort of challenge. It would have been far more interesting if they turned this into a Shaolin showdown moment. You know, where there is a challenge protecting the triangle and the two would race to get there before the other while simultaneously trying to stay alive. That would have been pretty cool. It would be in keeping with the dumb action movie vibe this film is trying to maintain and we wouldn't question it. I mean, the movie can't get any dumber at this point, can it? Well, that ironically leads us to the very next action scene. Somehow, there is a final fight between Laura and the main villain, even though she threw a knife in his chest a few seconds ago. He just gets back up and fights her as if nothing happened. Even for dumb action movie standards, that is really dumb. And all round, the action isn't trashy in a guilty pleasure kind of way, it's just trashy in a boring way. So as you can tell, I was not at all pleased with the action in Tomb Raider, and that genuinely surprised me. Can the new movie fare any better? Well, let's see. First of all, the action in this incarnation of Tomb Raider is very different from the 2001 movie. And although there is a chase scene, the action doesn't really kick into gear until the boat crash. And I thought the whole sequence was great. As well as being well shot, it also has a lot of visual inspirations that were taken directly from the game. The only glaring yet hilarious technical issue was that there was a ton of lightning going on, but no thunder. Now something else that I surprisingly liked about the action is how she utilizes the headlock during hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now in her very first scene, we see her boxing, and the movie establishes that it's a move she's learning. And watching her take lessons and then seeing her execute them in real life situations was well done and effective. And incidentally, it resulted in what I thought was the best and most intense scene of the movie where she drowns someone. The only problem though, is that we don't have any more scenes like it. Pretty much the explanation behind the rest of the action she does is all down to a couple of convenient flashbacks to her childhood. 
And that would be acceptable if this was a throwaway action movie, but it isn't. It's based on the game where she essentially starts from nothing but the bare minimum and through hardships, learns as she goes along. She doesn't suddenly become a confident action hero. Unfortunately though, in the film when she finally becomes the Laura Croft we know, it was so sudden and instantaneous it was practically a joke. She literally became a skilled marksman overnight, and like an expert starts to stealthily avoid the bad guys in the core of their own camp, shoots them down, and tells the slave workers to get to safety like she's some kind of superhero. I'm not gonna lie, that was a very poor transition, and absolutely pales in comparison to its source material. Now, that being said, of the two films, the one with the superior action is the 2018 version. In comparison to its source material, it is completely lackluster, but in comparison to the boring and dated action in the original, it far exceeds it. When I look at the 2001 Tomb Raider, I don't really see much in the way of possibilities, and I really struggle to find stuff to say about it. The two sum up words that constantly spring to my mind is dull and boring. That even carries through to the sets. They come off as uninspired. You'd expect a tomb to look ancient, have insects, be full of cobwebs, have horrendous lighting and dust particles all over the place. Instead, it just comes off as a set. And this is especially pitiful when you take into account the movie's budget was $115 million. Could you tell? Because I sure as hell couldn't. The Tomb Raider remake, on the other hand, is one of those movies where the more you think about it, the more it starts to unravel. Badly. And that is largely down to the limitations that come with a PG-13. Seriously, Warner Brothers, why? I know from the studio's perspective they think this will make them more money, but that honestly makes no sense. The game was rebooted and it decided to be more adult and it was a financial and critical success because of it. So if they went into the movie with the same intentions, then they could have repeated the success. But instead, all the advantages that really made the game as effective and critically praised as it is, was off limits for the movie. As the PG-13 rating pretty much limits it to the same kid friendly tropes a standard age-appropriate action movie usually has. The new Tomb Raider has also been criticised for being super slow, and although I agree that it definitely slows down, it picked up pretty quickly to me. The 2001 Tomb Raider on the other hand slows down constantly, and there were so much scenes where I was just bored out of my mind. The film just comes across as an Indiana Jones knockoff, only a million times less interesting. They even shamefully rip off one of its most iconic scenes. <sighs> And they even decided to rip off this scene from The Fugitive, another one of Harrison Ford's movies. It's time for the scores. The 2001 Tomb Raider gets a 3 out of 10, and the 2018 version gets a 5. In the end, I'm not mad with this movie, I'm just disappointed. And ultimately, it's not bad necessarily, it's just mediocre. And as soon as it's had its run in the cinema, I'm going to completely forget it even existed. And I am most definitely going to forget about this shitty movie. So that concludes another Versus video. If you guys liked it, please do give it a thumbs up and be sure to share the video too as this will make more people aware of the show. And if you are a new viewer to my channel, then please do click that subscribe button and the bell right next to it so you can stay up to date with my future Versus videos. Until the next time guys, I will catch all of you next time. Take care.